This is a HeadGum Podcast. Winning season returns at my bookie. You know, you might be in the Northern Hemisphere and it's summer turning into fall. You might be in the Southern Hemisphere and it's winter right now, about to turn into spring. Wherever you are on this pale blue dot on which we live, It's winning season, and winning season means doubling your first deposit. Take that initial deposit and multiply it by two. Winning season means insane props, epic bonuses, and the craziest cross-sport wagers. Imagine betting on baseball and basketball at once. My head is spinning. At my bookie, winning season means watching live sports and betting live sports all season long. Rejoice! The NFL has returned. That means action-packed Sundays and huge cash prizes. My Sundays are already action-packed, worshiping Almighty God, going to church. I mean, any huge cash prizes I got, going right in the donation bin. Get in on the action. Use promo code DOUGHBOYS and double your first deposit. New players get up to $1,000 in free play, designed to add more excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best this NFL season. Your chance to win big. Use promo code DOUGHBOYS and double your first deposit. Your winning season begins today only at my bookie. Like Oliver Evans, the inventor of the refrigerator, or Percy Spencer, the inventor of the microwave, you probably don't know the name Clarence Birdseye. But the taxidermist by trade with an ornithological optical orifice for a name is another man whose kitchen innovation forever changed the way people eat. After a stint working for the United States Department of Agriculture, Birdseye was transferred to Labrador, a frigid half-province of Canada, and while stationed there, Inuit native to the region taught him the process of freezing fish at sub-zero temperatures under massive blocks of ice. Birdseye noticed the rapid chill technique, as opposed to the slower process in use in the States, led to fewer and smaller ice crystals, which less muted the fish's flavor upon reheating. So in the 1920s, Birdseye shifted careers to the kitchen, using Inuit cultural knowledge as an inspiration for a scalable technology he called his quick freeze machine, and the process became known commonly as flash freezing. Flash freezing gradually became industry standard for its ability to preserve a fresh taste in a frozen product. At first vegetables, then meats, and, in time, fully prepared meals for home reheating. In the 1980s, after flash frozen food had become as American as McDonald's apple pie, and as domestic demand for Mexican food grew in the States, a frozen burrito company opened in Los Angeles, making their own tortillas in-house before filling them with starch and protein and flash freezing the assembled wrap. Today, As sales have reportedly made it the number one brand in the burrito sector, you'll find this budget-friendly Angelino original in your grocer's freezer aisle, not far from a brand of frozen vegetables called, in honor of the inventor of the quick freeze machine, Bird's Eye. This week on Doughboys, our month of frozen food reviews, Doughboys Topical Freeze continues with Tina's Burritos. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Tom Yum Nook, the spoon man, Mike Mitchell. Mm. It's a soup. You're calling me a soup. It's a soup and a, and, a, and a Tom Nook reference. That's courtesy of Jasmine from Worm Isle, uh, who writes, hit me up for Nook Miles tickets. Got to drop the friend code there, Jasmine. Huh. Roastspoonman at gmail.com. If you have an insult you like me to use, I'm Mitch at the top of the show. Wags, how are you? How you doing, Wags? I'm Waggy? doing okay. Do you like it? Do you like a Tom Yum? I do like a Tom As Yum. As soups go? Mm-hmm. It sounds, it's, it's, a, it's a strange, it is a strange name. It's a strange, it's a strange, I mean, like, I know it's, 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 it's a different language, but the Tom When you Yum, hear it in English, yeah, it's, it I sounds. Mean, it, because it sounds, it sounds like a, yeah, it sounds like, Tom, yeah, Tom is a man's name and it, it's a Tom. Sound, Tom sounds yeah. like a tasty gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like a Tom Yum. Tom Yum, I think, is like a for me like a top tier sick soup. Mm, okay, you know what I mean. Like with like when you, I feel like that's that's one I feel like I'm specifically craving when I've got some sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 I, I just feel like I like I want something hot and and with a little bit of spice to it. And I feel like Tom Yum will usually get the jo- the job done. But yeah, I'm I'm hanging in there. Who are your favorite uh, Tom Yums? Uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, he's a real Tom Yum. Um. I think you probably have to go a little bit younger and say like a Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, Hiddleston. I thought he's, you, I, I thought he's you were pretty go yummy. Like Hiddleston, yeah. You know, Hank's kind of a classic Tom. 
Um, and then beyond that, boy, I'm trying to think of someone. I feel like there's got to be. Oh, I know it. Tom Selleck. Wow. Who's yummier than Selleck? Yeah. Yeah. They should. Uh, he See, he's the only one who should have the name Tom Yum, I think. The soup shouldn't get it. The soup shouldn't get it. It should go to Selleck mm-hmm. uh, and that big that big stash. I can't believe you missed Hardy. Hardy is very Hardy is a big time Tom Yum. I also I think the Hardy boys should be about Tom Hardy. He plays both roles. <laughs> he plays both like roles. Kind of like Franco in that David Simon porno show. A, t- a, 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 a Tom Tom Hardy playing the, the, the Hardy boys would be, I think that is a great pitch. He likes doing weird shit, you know? He yeah. likes playing playing weird characters. That feels like it would be right in his wheelhouse. Mitch, we should touch on something real quick. This mm-hmm. uh, breaking choose, this happened as of today's record. Wendy's has a beef shortage. That's right. Uh, they're saying that that twenty percent of U.S. Wendy's are currently not selling burgers because they can't sell, they can't get fresh beef. Uh, Wendy's has fresh, not frozen beef. Can I just say I was a little po'd that they they mentioned me by name in the article? <laughs> well, everyone was worried about you. <laughs> they just they just wanted to include an aside that Mike Mitchell is okay. They were worried about me saying, uh, is he okay? And, and then also they blamed the shortage on me too, which I thought was <laughs> fucking rude. <laughs> Nick, uh, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. And here's a little drop for you. I've been trying to eat well, Nick, so I haven't been doing coke. We found this out about each other in, in Atlanta as well, that I, I we're both coke fiends. I am like fully addicted to Coke. I'm a big Coke fan. It's just so great. Finally trying to come back. I love Coke. I love it so much. I did get like a thing of Mexican Coke. Hey, yo, yeah, yo. Walk around with yeah, yo. All in my days, oh, I must have been crazy. For the world, and it's uh, it's tough to say because it's a place that's maybe not for the does may, not not maybe, but is 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 but is. I'm a big Coke fan. <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Nick? Oh my God, my my side is split. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a procedure to re re unsplit my side. You're gonna have to go to Doctor Giggles. That drop was sent in by at Salpal23, who writes. Hey, this drop sucks, but at least it isn't Shampoodler bad. Damn, shots fired at Shampoodler. Thanks, Sal, pal. Wow, Nick. Wow, excellent stuff. Uh, Send in your drops, as always, to spoonmandrops at gmail.com. And hey, Mitch, we have a guest. We actually have, unexpectedly, a second guest (laughs) um, (laughs) with us. Uh, Our guest today is a columnist for the New York Times and a political analyst for CBS News. Jamel Bowie is back. Hi, Jamel. Hey, guys. How are you all? Good. Doing, you doing while your your adorable son is uh, just climbed onto your lap as I was about to introduce you. Yes, yeah, so I think his face is smeared with chickpeas. Yeah, I could. Hmm. Yeah. He'll, he'll fit right in with the Doughboys. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's not alone. Um, uh, Jamel, last time we had you on the show, we had we did a live show in D.C. and we reviewed Kava, which I know is a regular haunt of yours. In the time since we recorded that show, has Kava still continued to be a place you frequented at all? Yeah, there's one here in Charlottesville and. Um, uh, back back in the before times when I could leave my home and go into restaurants, uh, I would go there uh, for a, a lunch salad on occasion. But now, of course, um, uh, we're all stuck in our homes, and uh, I eat almost exclusively sandwiches for lunch. Wow. Wow, just yeah. sandwiches. Yeah, what just do you sandwiches. put on a home Sammy? Turkey, lettuce, Smoked Gouda. I've been baking bread like a lot of people. Uh, nice. Uh, bought bought a bunch of yeast from a mill in Texas. Uh, so that's uh, that's where I have plenty of yeast at home, and so uh, some homemade bread, homemade mayo. Uh, wow. And that's pretty much it. Homemade mayo. That's a. My understanding is that that can be a real strain on the old uh, the old stirring appendage. Like, like, are you making it by hand or do you use like a like a, a standing mixer? Yeah, I use an immersion blender. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna okay. do that by hand. Yeah, by hand is like a mess and it's it's hard. And if you don't if you don't like you know use proper force, it'll be thin and gross. But if you um, put all the ingredients in like a little jar and then put a stand mixer in there, not stand mixer, um, uh, immersion blender in there, and turn it on for a minute, you got mayo. Man, I've never, I've like, I as someone who is such a mayo enthusiast, mm-hmm. I've never made it myself. I guess I'm kind of, 
I'm an, I'm I'm content enough with the store brand, uh, with just just the stuff that comes in a jar. But I'd be interested to try it. Do you plus up your mayo at all? Do you do anything divergent from the recipes? No, not nothing fancy. A little garlic in there, and uh, that's really about it. I keep MSG on hand, so I'll put some MSG in there. Um, nice. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's pretty. It's like way different than store bought mayo. I, I actually don't like store bought mayo all that much. Um, mm. But homemade mayo is like different enough that it's. Uh, I don't mind it. Mitch, as a, I, I know you're also someone who likes mayo, but adjacent to mayo, the aiolis, do you have a mm. favorite variant of aioli? I like a nice little garlic aioli. I don't know. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm fine with any aioli. Just, you know what I mean? It's going to be something different each time. So whatever they got, I'll take it. Aiolis are almost, are generally like generally work whatever they do to them. Mm-hmm. I've had a like a horseradish aioli a few times mm-hmm. that I'm you know and I love horseradish and I feel like that's a thing that can work well depending on what you're making. I, exactly. I, I'm, I'm, I like garlic. I'm a fan of the garlic aioli. I think that is probably my number my number one. And Nick, I just want to say quickly. Yes. Happy Cinco Cinco de Mayo. Hey, speaking of mayo, we are recording this on the fifth of May. Cinco de Mayo. Are right, Jamel? Do you ever? Are you someone who has a who likes a margarita? Do you like a, a Mexican cocktail? Absolutely. We um, restaurants here are like doing you know takeout cocktails now. So I think was it last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago we um, we got some uh, margaritas from a local Mexican place. That's awesome. I hope that trend continues. That's a thing that I feel like they've in some. I know in some areas they've loosened the laws a little bit to allow more to go cocktails. Uh, and uh, I hope that I just hope they let people do that because that's that has been a fun way to make it feel like oh this is something resembling normal like being able to get a, a some batch cocktail to take home and put over ice yeah we've done that a couple of times and yeah with margaritas in particular those those tra- those you know you can just have make up a batch and they they travel well right right I, I like I love a I love a Paloma I'm a big Paloma guy Mitch you like a Paloma mm-hmm. yes I like a Paloma but I mean it's not my favorite. What is your favorite? What's in a Paloma again? Tell me. Tell me Paloma tell me. is Paloma is tequila and grapefruit soda. Yeah, it's not my favorite. I mean, I like it all right. I'd rather go margarita or, you know, honestly, I'd go, uh, um, oh, God, what's it called? Uh, the Michelada? The, yeah, Michelada, yeah. I made one on you the You should show. remember it as Mitch and admit your name is I, in it. I, I know, I know, I know. I, I messed up. I also forgot to say that if you want to send in a, a drop, send it to spoonmandrops at gmail.com. I just forgot to tell, I forgot to say that, Nick. I thought I said it. You did not say it. You didn't say oh, okay. it. Okay. You didn't say okay. it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, no, Michelada I would go with over or, or margarita. Strawberry marg. I like a strawberry marg, Nick. I, I like anything Ooh. with mezcal. I'm, I'm a big fan of mezcal. I like the, the smoky taste of it. Um, if I see a mezcal cocktail on a menu, that's sort of what I'm going to go for. I do love mezcal. By, uh, by my lovely wife, Natalie, loves mezcal as well. She she actually is is much more like she's she's more into it than i am and she will always uh like jabelle seek it out but i like and i've noticed one thing about mezcal is like i think because it hasn't quite fallen into the uh, maybe maybe this is just my experience and maybe this isn't true in in general but like i feel like because it hasn't quite fallen into like the craft cocktail sort of world yet that mezcal is still pretty cheap yeah like i feel like a lot of these other spirits they, they're 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 expensive everywhere but you can get a very good mezcal for not too much for a bottle uh but yeah that's a that's a fun thing to have in your home bar right there's no there are no celebrities like hawking mezcal like with tequila where like every other you know <laughs> Pers- like like the rock has a tequila yes uh, george clooney has a tequila i got some clooney tequila in my home some casamigos it's not bad but you're right there's a what there's a big opening for a celebrity mezcal i feel like gad should get in there <laughs> josh gad's mezcal i think it's time to announce the Doughboys, mitch's mezcal wow it's just a bottle of smoke <laughs> we couldn't we, we couldn't afford the actual liquor so we went to we went to a a burning home and collected the smoke <laughs> i'm not a big fan i see i don't like the i don't like the smokiness of uh mezcal as much i, I went to uh when i was in mexico city i went to uh a re- no, i can't remember the name of the re- my brain's just not working today wags just one of those days um, it happens that you know what I've been noticing that as I've aged I was thinking about this last night as I was having some trouble sleeping and I was just sort of lying there and I was just like 
man, my memory used to be so sharp. Mm. Like I could recall a conversation line by line, and now I will like forget the name of somebody I work with. And I'll like have to like I'll like get get like a weekend away from work and I'll come back and I'll be like, wait, what is this guy's name again? Are you talking about me? No, I know your name. <laughs> I'm I feel confident I could recite your name. I'm choosing not to. <laughs> but I, I know what your name is. But, oh, you know but what? I, did, I got the name of it. Yeah. I didn't even look it up. Pujol. Wow. Pujol. Got it. And I went there and I had uh I had it was great. I had a bunch of different tacos. And um, I think I talked about it on the pod at one point, but they, they you they, did a little bit. They it was uh, they paired it with um, with uh, mezcal. So uh, it was uh, and I I don't love I had some of the best mezcal and I and I and I wasn't too into it. Too smoky for me. Too smoky. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it works for me, and I, I think it's especially if you get it in a cocktail, it it definitely it, you know it, it cuts that a little bit. So I I, I don't know. I, I like it. You know my issue with Last Jedi. Hmm. Too snoky. Right. <laughs> you thought there was too much snoke, and la- this is the thing you've said before. Snoke, every, snoke, snoke. every other scene, every other scene, Snoke was there. <laughs> you know, you couldn't you couldn't look away, and it was just Snoke the whole time. Finn would be Mez- saying something, Snoke would pop up and say, hey, it's Snoke. Yeah. Even after they kill him, it'll be like a, you know, then there'll be like a scene between like Finn and Rose Tico and every other line. They're like, boy, I miss Snoke. <laughs> I wish Snoke was here. Mezcal, too smoky. Last Jedi, too smoky. Just remember it that too way. Too smoky. Mm-hmm. In fact, in the credits, they say dedicated to Snoke. <laughs> He's a fictional character. Need to give like an in memoriam for him, and then under it, 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 it there's an ellipsis, and then it says, "Was he big?" <laughs> <laughs> They're not even sure. They, they don't they don't know. It's unresolved. I was hoping to get some closure in episode nine, but but did not deliver. Wait, Jamal, I, as someone who watches uh, a, a, as a Star Wars uh, f- uh, fan, did you what did you think of? We didn't get your uh, Rise of Skywalker reaction. What did you think of episode nine? Yeah, I. I uh... So when I when I saw it, I saw it with my brother, and um, I was like, afterward, I was like, this is not good. This is uh, this is very bad. Um, did not enjoy it, and I have not thought about it since then. And so that's where I am now. Like it's like yeah. if, I, if I try to re- if I think about it again, it's like yeah, it's just sort of. It was like eating a candy bar. Like there's some Star Wars. You know, it's fun to see Star Wars stuff. Ever, of course, Babu Freak is a legend. Um, yes. Uh, uh, but other than that, there's nothing about that movie that's left any kind of lasting impression. I neither, it re- I, I neither dislike, I don't, I neither hate it nor, you know, feel good about it because it doesn't inspire any particular kind of feeling in me. Yeah, you're right. It's just kind of disposable and empty. And, and yes, the only thing I see people citing is what you mentioned, Babu Frick is like that's like you'll the the only memes I see that have at all endured from episode nine are referencing that little guy. And he is cute. Jamel. Um, but let yeah. the hate flow through you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um I it I it, you know I didn't even watch any Star Wars yesterday, Nick. I watched uh later Raiders of the Lost Ark on Sunday night. It was a Sunday night movie, which is kind of a, a fun throwback. I watched that on Sunday, and what a great—I mean, one of the best movies. But I didn't watch any Star Wars this week. I didn't. I didn't watch a Star Wars on. I yeah. I I I don't make a point of doing anything for May the Fourth Star Wars related. Although I did buy just I I our buddy Griffin Newman, um, who was just on the pod the previous week. I I popped in his. He did a thirty-hour live stream for charity where he watched all uh him and uh uh him and his uh uh oh fuck I can't uh, Connor. Um, who uh, uh, he was playing the George Lucas character, and Griffin was playing Watto, and they watched like thirty hours straight of Star Wars. And so I popped in, and the time that I was in there, like the the forty five minute slot I was on their stream, was watching the holiday special, which is bananas. Like that's something mm. I've never just sat down and watched the holiday special all the way through. I've just seen clips of like the weirdest parts, but it is f- so weird. I was supposed I, I was supposed to do that with you, wasn't I? Oh yeah, you may have flaked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, didn't I, flake. I, I, I I dropped in. I dropped in last night for that too, and we um we had Ewok: The Battle for Endor, which is a movie I've mm. sort of heard of but had never seen. 
and I it was yeah. the last thirty minutes. And as far as I could tell, it invo- the movie involves um, Wilford Brimley like fighting some sort of ape man and child soldiers. It's true. Uh, that that uh, that Bizarre. movie holds a special spot in my heart, but I have not watched it in a long time. But there's a very fast creature in it. Also, just a heads up. The child sounds are coming from Jamel's house, not Nick's house. For all the <laughs> all right, take it easy. All right, come on. Yeah, I have I have a toddler, and it's not yet his bedtime. So it, it's actually about the time of day when he uh, completely loses his mind. It's like this mm-hmm. thing, and I, I can't really explain it. It's but the he has dinner. Hour. Yeah, witching hour, pretty much. He has dinner, and then he just like I, I don't. Know, you guys are probably too old for Dragon Ball Z. He becomes like a like a like a fucking Super Saiyan of toddler energy. And uh, and runs like terror. The, we had to let the dog out because he was terrorizing the dog, um, throwing, wow. throwing pillows at her. He just wants to play with her, but he doesn't understand that she's not a person. <laughs> and I just want to be clear. Yeah, Nick and I aren't too old for anything. <laughs> 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 We're currently playing a baby game called Animal Crossing almost every single day. Um, I mean, so am I. It's great. Uh, no, I, yeah. I, I I was a fan of of, of Dragon Ball Z. Eighty nine to ninety six was its was its uh, original run. It kind I I am just enough older than you, Mitch, where it didn't quite hit me in my childhood, and mm. I, I absorbed some of it later. But it like my prime cartoon watching years where I was not watching Dragon Ball Z. Wow. Yeah, you but you, the, never, you never you never you've never visited it all over since since then or no. I'm aware of some of the lore, you know. I know I I know I've heard Super Saiyan. I know what what the context is. I know your Gokus. I know your Vegetas. Mm. Uh, but I don't. But I don't have like I haven't like seen every episode like some people we know who've just like absorbed all of it. A lot of you know a lot of MMA guys. I'm and a, a piccolo. Lot of, I'm a piccolo man myself. Piccolo's cool. I was a piccolo man in a wind ensemble oh, with Jesus. all the woodwinds that I was playing. <laughs> Piccolo is very hard, boy. That is a really, really high, high degree of difficulty. Yeah, it's hard as hell, dude. No, I mean this. It's a small flute, so you have to have to really control your embouchure to be able hmm. to play that thing and make it sound decently. Okay, yeah, this is making less sense to me now. Yeah, I, I was a Piccolo fan too, but that's because uh, he, in my head, he was the black character. Don't <laughs> ask me. Don't ask me how that works. <laughs> Uh, a lot of MMA guys and a lot of uh, guys at the gym, like guys who get in really great shape. I show you, buddy, if he is like this, like got into, uh, got into fitness because of Dragon Ball, because it, it is like a show where just so much of it is like working out and is just like get it, like training yourself and getting your body, like getting in pristine condition. And everyone mm. has just such awesome looking muscles that 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 just kind of became that that segment of nerd culture became like a very fit. Uh, I think there's a lot of pro wrestlers who like got into it via Dragon Ball. You know, you know who I am in that world. I'm Fat Boo. <laughs> mm, boy, <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. You know, it's true. Jamel, you are a you are someone that I know from your social media is a breakfast cereal. I'll say enthusiast. Is that fair? That's that's about right. Yeah, enthusiast. You've tried it. You've sampled a bunch of different and reviewed a bunch of different breakfast cereals. Do you have any recent favorites that come to mind as or, or th- things that have really le- made a lasting impression on you one way or the other? Yeah. So I, I guess I'm like contractually obligated to say that I do this for serious eats. Um, so I every month I try a new breakfast cereal and review it. And this past month, uh, and the review is not up yet, but I bought um, banana nut Cheerios, which were new to my grocery store, um, and those were terrific. Wow. Uh, I don't really like bananas very much, and artificial banana flavor is, like, fine, but these kind of just taste like eating a bowl of banana bread. Um, wow. And they were really good. So highly recommend those. On the other end of something that I ate and, like, regret it uh, and will regret it for the rest of my life um, – uh, I bought a box of Peeps. No, actually, no, I take that back. It's not these. It is uh, the first cereal I reviewed for them, um, Cinnamon Fillows, which were like, it's like these like pillow-shaped cereals with like cream inside of them. Oh, boy. Um, oh God. And they, uh, 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 is my child around here? No, it, it, when you bite into them, it, 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 I have to imagine that's what it's like. That's like a, it's like a, like a, like a cum sack or something. <laughs> 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 they, 
There's a there's a smoke outline where Wager once was. He's at the store. <laughs> You said uh, it was my child around here, and I wasn't sure. I was like worried, like, wait, does your, did you lose track of your kid? And I was like, oh, no, you just wanted to say something obscene. Right, right, right. <laughs> he both doesn't understand yet, and I just don't want to I don't want to risk it. Right. Yeah, just the idea. Uh, you're a creamsman, Nick. I thought that you would uh, something like this would maybe uh, appeal to you, but. I am a creamsman, but I don't like an unpleasant pop in the mouth. Like, I don't like it's just like a surprise, like, like the gusher. I, I never connected with gushers. I don't like how those, like, explode in your mouth. And I don't think it's fun. No? No, I don't like it. It's not a crazy explosion with gushers. It's just a little, it's a little one. I don't love it. I also, like a, like a, even a jelly donut sometimes, like a filled donut, if you sometimes get it and it's just sort of like, is a little too much filling in one go, it, it, it's not my favorite. I feel yeah, the same but way. I definitely, yeah. Anything, anything filled, or even like if I get like a bagel with like lox and cream cheese, I don't like too much cream cheese because I don't like the feeling of trying to like bite into the bagel and cream cheese just like oozing out, grosses me out. Do you when you, when you're having a bagel with cream cheese, do you keep it uh, intact as like you're eating it like a sandwich, or do you eat them half by half? Like a sandwich. Okay. Oh Mitch, wow. What do you do? I do half by half, but. I don't like an over creamed like a like I like a good I like a good amount of cream cheese. But if you go to when you go to New York, and they they make it basically the the bagel sandwich. Yes, and they put such a huge chunk of cream cheese in there. I don't need that much cream cheese. There's there's enough for another bagel at least in in the so amount much of cream, cream cheese. cheese you got to fold the bagel in half. <laughs> It's it is excessive. I it's I've excessive. Been, like yeah. I feel those New York bagelries, and they're they're. I feel like it's a there's a they're a, a little bit elitist there about mm. their bagels. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and um, but I've I I do like I like a good amount. Yeah, it's got to be balanced. You know what I found is that like I, I if I if I'm gonna get something that's very creamy like a like a salt bagel something that's got like a like a like a lot of salt in it like that it'll kind of cut against the cream cheese and the cream cheese will cut against the salt. I actually feel like that's something that. That works well with a nice layer of frosting, but it's um, yeah. A lot of places they'll overdo it. Ask for it on the side. You, you, yeah, the yeah, portion out your own cream cheese. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, Jamal, what, what is your what is your favorite cereal? What's your what's your what's your all time favorite cereal? Wow, my, big question. So my all time favorite cereal, I think, is just Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, Hell yeah! Wow, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's sort of like it's not. It's not like a perfect cereal. It gets soggy too quickly, um, mm -hmm. but it's really satisfying to eat. It tastes great. The milk is always great. Uh, to the extent that I even buy cereal these days, I try not to buy Cinnamon Toast Crunch because it does not have any nutritional value. And um, uh, I, if my if my kid sees me eating cereal, he wants to have some too, and I would feel very bad about giving him Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So we have um, <laughs> Qu Quaker Toasted Oatmeal Squares. Uh, or Quaker Ooh, right. squares, whatever they're called, and those are great. Actually, those are like super delicious. Um, so that's like my second favorite. Are those a little less sugary? Yeah, they don't have that much sugar. They're really, really oh, okay. crunchy. Um, they're really good. I I bought some um, Frosted Flakes, and it's kind of uh, reignited my love with. I, I'm I'm a Frosted Flakes man because I I just remember having. When I was younger, I just had cornflakes at my grandma's house, and then you would put sugar on the cornflakes, basically. Yes. There was something with cornflakes when they when they get a little bit soggy, they still taste pretty great. I, I, I'm, I'm a corn, I'm a, uh, uh, probably, a, this is probably my number one. I like Raisin Bran as well, but Frosted Flakes slash cornflakes, that does it for me for whatever reason. The great thing about Frosted Flakes is they're really conducive to just having a big-ass bowl of them. Like, for whatever reason, a yeah. really big bowl of Frosted Flakes is satisfying in a way that, like, a big bowl of other cereals wouldn't be. And I can't – I have no rational explanation for this, but I think it's true. A, a thousand percent agree with you. I've done that a couple times over, over the course of quarantine. I, I, I love them. Nick, you, are you a Frosted Flakes man or no? I do love a – I do really enjoy a Frosted Flake. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, one of my childhood favorites. Haven't had it in years, but it is a very, very – you know, an S-tier cereal – Mm -hmm. uh, I I think probably you know I am I am something of a of a loyalist to the Captain Crunch varietals, both Captain Crunch the original and then Peanut Butter Crunch. I really like. I like Crunch Berries too. All the Captain Crunches for me were like a big time, you know, fat kid indulgence, and so I have a I have an allegiance to those. 
And then also the uh, man, this one is is too it's too much. It's excessive, but Cookie Crisp is just so mm. sugary and so it just tastes so specific. Like it doesn't really taste like cookies, uh, but it, but like the, it tastes like how the shape should taste. These cookie like <laughs> shapes. I don't know. It just it just somehow makes sense in my in my brain. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think probably I would definitely if I was gonna have like a Mount cereal more, I think Cinnamon Toast Crunch would honestly be up there uh, because I I do love that one. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Frosted Flakes quite quite makes the cut, but it's definitely one that I enjoy. Frosted Flakes to me though is like uh, it's sugary, but not. It still tastes. It's not sugary enough where it feels like a, a, a cinnamon toast crunch or a, or I'm mean, well not cinnamon toast crunch but a Captain Crunch at least. It, it still I, I definitely seems could edible. Eat, <laughs> yes, to your point, I could eat Frosted Flakes more frequently for breakfast than I could any of these cereals now as an adult. Like mm-hmm. the the uh, the ones I mentioned are all just such sugar bombs. They're they're effectively desserts and almost should be treated as such. Mitch, your one of your cats just crawled onto your lap. Well, Nick. You got to know what my cat is. You got to know which one this we, is. We, of course, uh, have Wally. Yeah. Wow. On the microphone. <laughs> you got it right. Holy shit. He's been studying. I'm very, Nick, I'm very, <laughs> that makes me very happy. Why, and why did you know that, Nick? Uh, Wally has the white stripe down That's his right. uh, the W and W. Eh? So it made the little association. Oh, shit. He just fell. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> How are your cats doing, Mitch? Um,. They're wondering why I'm home a little bit more, I feel like, than I usually Just slightly a little bit more than I usually am. <laughs> uh, they're, they're very cute. Like, uh, you know, like, they're always off doing their own thing. Uh, and Irma more so than Wally. But both of them, if I go to another room, they eventually just come in that room. And they, they follow right. me around. It's very, it's very cute. I love them, Nick. They're keeping me. They're good company here in, in, the, in quarantine. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, I, I imagine, especially as a as a guy by like flying solo as mm-hmm. a solo man, uh, much like Han. Yes, back in the day, I'm surprised my name isn't Solo. Mitch Solo. Well, no one gave it to you. That's what happened. No one gave Han. it to you. Yet. Yeah, 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 no one gave it to you. You need, you need to go somewhere, and they'll ask you who did you come with, and you'll be like, "Well, I'm here by myself," and they'll say, "Well, okay, you're you're Mitch Solo now." <laughs> And I'm just so glad that got answered. Like, I was just so glad we had closure on that. Oh, absolutely. I was well, watching those films. I was like, why is this guy's last name Solo? That <laughs> made, doesn't make any sense to me. For 40 years, people screamed, why is his name Solo? Why is he Solo? <laughs> it's always good to get some new information that makes it worse. I Now, now I'm like... <laughs> Han Solo was such a cool name, and now I'm like, oh, now it's like bad. It's because he was alone, and it's that, that's yeah, such a it's bummer. Less ex- less less fun. But I was gonna say, like, as a man who is by himself, I imagine having some animal companionship is is nice. It is. It's great. I love I love having them around. They they you know they 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 crawl in between my legs, when, and you can't really move around in your bed at night. But they're they're great company, Nick. I love them. They're they're they're, they're, they're keeping me happy over here. Jamel, what's the pet situation in your home? Uh, we have a dog, uh, an older hound named Rose. We got her from the shelter a couple years ago. Um, yeah. And she's a uh, she's very good girl. Uh, she's currently, whenever someone goes outside, she wants to follow. So she's currently yeah, looking at me and looking back at our uh, back uh, door and uh, pretty much wants me to let her out so she can go hang out with everyone else. Um, wow. But yeah, but she's cool. She's great. She hates other dogs. Loves people, hates dogs. Wow. That's a fascinating animal affectation. When a dog ha- doesn't like other dogs, it's like an anti wiger <laughs> Hmm. You're saying I don't like people, but I do like dogs. Yeah, right. I like people. Oh, sure. I'm you do. fine with people. <laughs> Jamel, you mentioned that you were having that you were baking some uh, some breads for your for your sandwiches at home. But I know you're also a pie enthusiast. You're a pie mm-hmm. guy. Have you baked any pies while you've been in lockdown? Have not baked any pies. I've only recently started getting back into baking sweets, and because uh, I, for whatever reason, just like wasn't feeling it. Uh, but right, no pies. But I did make uh, on Sunday. Was it? Yeah, a citrus cake, a citrus almond cake. Wow. Um, so because I had some. I had some raw al- almonds. Let's say onions. I don't. Know. I can't. So, you, Nick, if your if your memory has been going, 
not really speaking to people outside of my immediate family has caused <laughs> my ability to talk to just like go out the window. Like I just oh, can no longer, I can no longer uh, uh, construct sort of like sentences, which is a problem since it's like my job. Um, right. But I made this citrus almond cake using I blanched some raw almonds, turned them into almond flour, had an orange and a lemon, turned that into like a paste. And, you know, sugar, flour, olive oil, uh, some other, some eggs, and uh, turning that into a cake. It's pretty good. That sounds delightful. You know what I've thought about, Nick? Mm-hmm. No one, uh, pies, pies are still being eaten, but no one's probably been, uh, gotten a pie in the face since all of this went down. Yeah, I mean, pie in the face incidents are probably way down. Also, you know what? Old ladies bumps me out. Old ladies can cool their pa- their pies on the windowsill without any worry, because no one's going around swiping pies these days. No. That's not that's that's just not right. That's not right. Uh, you know, An old lady when she puts a pie on the windowsill, she should live in fear that it's going to get snatched. <laughs> that's what I think. Well, you know, these days, I mean, you can check the FBI uniform crime statistics: pie thefts down, pies in the face down. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, guys floating horizontally, uh, being led by a pie smell uh, way down. Right, way down. Um, all, all sort of pie-related crime uh, is uh, at historic lows. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just, I, if you're Nick, if you float towards a pie, if you, if you, that is, that's a huge. You can get arrested for that. It's like a huge offense. I think it's a capital <laughs> offense. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't put a bullet in your fucking head. Half of Gitmo is filled with those guys. <laughs> Have you guys turned to sw- to more sweets? Well, because because mm. I feel like I've been, uh, I feel like I've weirdly been eating healthier. If that mm. like I, I've just been kind of like okay, well I'm I don't know what it is. I don't. It might just be because I'm, I, I'm. I, it feels like like okay, this is a way I can kind of be. Uh, somewhat productive when I can't, when I'm in a, in a very, when we're in a very unproductive world is just by like dialing in my nutrition. But I know some people have been like, you know, really snacking more. Some people have, have been indulging their sweet tooths. Have you guys, what have you been snacking on? I've been trying not to snack. I mean, it's because like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm normally in, in, again, in the before times, I uh, went to the gym all the time. And so like, now that I can't really do that anymore, uh, I, I've lost my excuse for just like consuming food constantly. Right. Yeah. I. I my, my two indulgences during quarantine have been I bought Snickers ice cream bars, and then I bought them again. Uh, fuck, those are so good. I there's about six to a pack, and I usually eat about two of them a week. Um. So that's not terrible, but not great. And then I also bought. I had some reduced fat cheese. It's last week. Or a couple weeks ago, I, I, I bought it a, a couple weeks ago, and then I and I got some toasted ones this week, uh, and I try not to eat those much either. But I, those those are the two things that if I'll on Saturday night when I'm doing trivia with the Quincy with the Quincy crew, and uh and I've had a, if I have a couple drinks, then then I'll then I'll pull out some cheez Its. But Nick, at, like you, I'm eating. I am eating healthy. I'm 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 eating uh mostly salads, and then I have uh a meal delivery thing that I do for, for dinners. And so the only exception is on Sunday really is when I, that's when I go right. a little wild. But wait, what I, this, this salad is the salad thing is big news for me. Cause I know you're not someone who loves a salad. I love salads. What you love salads. Yeah. I love salads. What have you been putting in them? I love like a, I love like a delicious salad. I, for here at my house, when I'm making them, I just do. Uh, I usually do butter lettuce, and then I do carrots and onions. And uh, okay, I have a um, a Greek yogurt dressing that's like a ranchy Greek ro- yogurt dressing. That's not bad. There was this this o- oikos dressing that the Greek yogurt dressing that I really liked, and it's I can't find it anymore. I don't know if it's a quarantine thing or if it just isn't on the shelves anymore, but. Uh, and then I'll uh, sometimes I'll order out salads that like I'll get a tender green salad, but those are tricky. You got to watch out. Yes, because some of them will have a thousand calories in them, so you got to you know, even the better ones are probably closer to like six hundred calories, which you know, for a salad. Are you putting any protein on those salads or anything? Or are you? Are yeah, you... the the, the six hundred. Oh, on the, my salads, uh, the on ones salads, that I make. Yeah. It, 
The ones I make in the house, no, I'm not. I'm not usually doing any protein on them. I, I'll do it. I'll do it with my dinner or with my with like a lunch. Like I'll have like turkey and and a and a side salad, basically. I for lunch today I cobbled together in addition to having the uh, the really really unhealthy food that we we're going to talk about in a second. But I had accompanying that I cobbled together like a shitty Waldorf salad just based off of the ingredients that I had wow. in the house, and it's just like. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, you can I, I, I've actually enjoyed that when I make a home salad, because that's a that's lunch for me, maybe four or five days a week. And I'm just like, I'll just go. I'm not just going to throw like a, a lettuce blend in there and call it a day. Like I'll put I'll put a little bit of work into it. You know, how to put, you put like 10 minutes of work into a salad and you could have something that's like that, that's like way plussed up over, you know, what we'd be if you just just kind of half assed it and threw a handful of whatever your bag mix was in there. Just some some walnuts, some some uh, uh, finely sliced apple. Mm -hmm. uh some uh some avocado i I deviated from the waldorf formula by throwing in some red bell pepper Mm -hmm. uh but you know just with kind of a mescaline uh and um and kale blend and uh nutritional yeast i've gotten big on nutritional yeast i feel like that works really well for me it like kind of gives what gives what cheese does but without like the the dairy factor it's really good on popcorn it's good on popcorn okay i love nutritional yeast on popcorn wow that's a good tip is there is there a Statler salad? Um, <laughs> yeah, there is a Statler salad. There should be um, a Statler salad. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it, it smells like socks. It, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly mothballs <laughs> and like a vinaigrette. <laughs> I, I uh, when we were doing trivia the other day with the Quincy crew. They they asked what the name of the two old men in the Muppets were, and it was the fastest I answered a trivia question the entire night. I was the only <laughs> I was the only one who who lit. Up. I don't think everyone got it, but a Statler and Waldorf, as you know, Nick. Um, yes, but there should be a Statler salad, shouldn't it? There, I bet honestly, some like cool uh, gastro pub has done a Statler salad. I bet oh. I bet someone has come up with that as like kind of like a you're making me kitschy not like take it on a Waldorf. What, you don't think someone has come up, has come up with that? No, just like, like the gastro pub place that did. Now I don't like it anymore. I don't like it. <laughs> it's all small plates, but everything's eighteen dollars. And they and they they broke the. Uh, they've actually opened back up before quarantine broke. <laughs> Nick, have you been demonstrating down at the beaches for them to open back up since you're down there in a uh, down? Come on, the, what? No, no, I no, absolutely no. Of course not. What are you doing? Uh, but the uh, yeah, that is like a it's weird, though, even going outside, because like I mm-hmm. went on like a little bit of a run today and I was tell- telling Emma this before we started recording because Emma is a is a runner and I am not much of a runner. But like Jamel, I'm someone who goes to the who'd been going to the gym regularly, I, even religiously, I would say before this all began. And so I went on a little bit, tried to get a little bit of cardio in today, but with the with like a face mask and man it's i like i got winded after like i, I just like i was running 11 minute miles and got winded after two miles I was just like i can't even breathe anymore i feel like i'm gonna asphyxiate i just can't get enough oxygen in my lungs having that eighth inch of fabric you know obstructing your breathing it's tricky nick i got news for you my friend yeah you're a fat boy <laughs> <laughs> no no that can't be. it's the fabric it's nothing to do with my obesity i've i've been i've been doing my walks and i'm like very slowly being like i should i should jog or run this stretch right here which is uh i haven't felt those feelings in a long time so it's a positive thing that's great but uh but still i have yet to do it but i will at some point i'll probably break my knees as soon as i try to run again i haven't yeah, you got to be careful as a big guy because, yes, you're right. I am carrying a lot of weight on my frame these days. And, yeah, you do have to be careful with the, the knees and the back. Um, just the pounding of the pavement can be relentless. Mm. Oh, so have you been doing anything for fitness with your with uh, the gym not being available? Yeah, the, uh, we live down the street from a middle school, and the track is open um, since the schools are wow. closed. So I just go down to the track and, like, run laps. Um, and, oh, wow. And uh, – uh, do push-ups and use they have like the soccer goals up up still and they're they're actually just the right size to be able to do pull-ups on them so i'll do that although i'll say <laughs> like a couple of days ago i was doing this and a cop 
pulled up and just I like, could tell just like watching me the whole time. And I wanted to be like, listen, dude, I'm not about to steal these soccer goals. You can chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. And yet people down at the beach protesting, not Nick. There's no there's no <laughs> there's no cops down there enforcing them not. There was a video the other day that fucking made me so mad. Ugh. Oh yeah, of all those like wild ass white people screaming at the cops. It's Man. insane. Man, God that that's freedom right there. I wish I could scream into a cop's face. <laughs> <laughs> It's so it, it 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 that 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 is so I I just don't understand what you know whatever we don't have to get into it it's too depressing to even think about it's a bad but, world yeah yeah it sucks hey we should pivot from a, <laughs> we should pivot from a from a bad world to uh some bad food what we've been putting into our bodies yeah, this week not so for this fast, podcast Nick I, I'll say bad in terms of nutritionally I, okay. that I feel like is beyond dispute they, these are these are very very processed. Uh, food items that are that are calorically dense, uh, but we're we're talking frozen burritos. And Jamel, when we talked to you about uh, about doing a, 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 an episode for this month for Doughboy's Topical Freeze, our, our exploration of frozen meals, uh, you specifically cited burritos. Is there a is there a reason for that? Back when I was uh, when I first started in journalism about ten years ago, didn't get paid a lot of money and ate a lot of frozen burritos. It was sort of like a, a staple item of my diet. And so I was just sort of like, I've not eaten a frozen burrito. Like, the first time I got a pay raise, I was like, okay, no more frozen burritos for me. So I have not eaten a frozen burrito since I was like 23. Wow. Uh, so I was just like, I, was just like, I want to try a frozen burrito again. Have an excuse to do it. Do you eat, as, as, a, as an avid home cook, do you ever eat frozen food in general? We, you, I use frozen vegetables all the time. Um, got it. Uh, so like for, for, uh, for like soups or stews or like whatever, frozen greens are so much more convenient. And like, there's no real difference in terms of texture because it's all being simmered anyway. Um, there are some things that I think actually taste a bit better when you roast them that are frozen. Like I made some, uh, for, I roasted some frozen okra yesterday into like kind of little crispy okra pops. Um, but, uh, it's, Frozen prepared foods, not so much. Uh, I can't think of anything that I've eaten that's been prepared and that was frozen recently. Yeah, I, I my burrito, my frozen burrito path is similar to yours, where it was a thing that I had a lot when I was younger and broker, and then I kind of reached a point where I realized that you know for when I could afford not to eat the, not to eat them anymore. Cause they are so they are dirt cheap. And that's the thing about frozen burritos, especially specifically this week's chain. I, I was reading some blogs that were like, you can find these on sale for 16 cents a piece. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's, in, I remember their Tina's burritos. We used to be like five for a dollar at, at some places. So they are, they are super duper cheap, but man. Yeah. I like in terms of, in comparison to just like a tortilla, and some even just canned beans and pre-shredded cheese that you could make like on your stovetop or or in your microwave. Like to me, that is so much better than what you would get from a frozen burrito. But Mitch, I know you are someone who has some allergic, uh, uh, some allegiance to frozen burritos. I think frozen burritos are hard. First of all, I, I don't, I do not think mm. they're easy. I, uh, as we were saying with with, and do you mean do you mean texturally when you take them out of the wrapper? <laughs> just. Nice bite into that frozen burrito. <laughs> you think I'm that much of a fool? Oh, man, I just drooled no. as I said that. Um, <laughs> um, I I think that for me, burritos, as a, as a young uh, Irish scared little uh, white boy, I was afraid to eat any food outside of like, ha- like Americanized when I was a real little kid. Right, pizza and burgers and Amer- and spaghetti and and kind of like a, um and and so like a I never really ventured out and when I was young young I never really ventured out when I was like in elementary school or or and I like even tacos I I like we I had tacos of course but Mexican food was not a thing that I would eat and then out here I mean I, it's my second favorite food I've said this before I love I love Mexican food but a lot of my experience with burritos. I mean, like, really, my first experience with burritos, I feel like, are these little frozen 
Tina's Burritos. That's kind of my first introduction. Your first experience, your introduction to burritos was Tina's Burritos specifically. I mean, here's the other thing too, Nick, is that like there weren't a ton of burrito. I mean, and this is just the, the crazy way the, that the United States has even changed in the last yes. 40 years. But in like the 80s, there were like two Mexican restaurants and a Taco Bell that wasn't even close to my house until, you know, middle school or whatever when, when the first one opened up nearby. And Taco Bell was, in a way, my weird introduction into Mexican food and, and, right. uh, ta- and like Taco Night. But like, you know, Taco Night, whatever. You know what I mean? That doesn't really count. Well, you mentioned like you mentioned a couple of Italian dishes as as your favorites as a kid, and like I think it's kind of happened in our lifetimes. We've seen Mexican food go from being like this is a regional thing, tour in border states to being like another national cuisine, like like Mexican American food, like Italian American cuisine. It, it's just like everywhere. I feel like there's we were in Nashville, and they're like, oh, there's this great Mexican, there's this great taqueria. You guys got to try. There, 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 and you know, like as a kid, there is like a slight. There is a little bit of a xenophobia thing going on because you don't sure. know what this food is. You, you see Indiana Jones, which is xenophobic in some ways, and they <laughs> eat weird stuff. And you're like, is there? And as a little kid, you're like, is there weird stuff in this food that's different from my basic burger? You know what I mean? Like, I you, you, I don't know that. And as a kid, I didn't understand that. And Temple of Doom made you afraid of tacos. <laughs> that is such an A to C. <laughs> Temple of Doom didn't make me afraid of tacos. I still ate tacos, but taco, <laughs> but tacos to See, me but is when like your parents take you out to the Monkey Brains restaurant. That is, you just thought back to Temple of Doom. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be back with more Doughboys. Hey, in these trying times, it's nice to support your loved ones and your community if you have the means. An unexpected gift, an extra large tip. Be sure to do that if you're getting takeout. Or in particular, if you're dining out at a patio or something like that, use boost that gratuity. The floor is no longer fifteen percent; it's way higher. And things may have changed around us, but our inner drive to be there for the people who we care about runs deeper than ever. When we come together as a community, we empower ourselves to make meaningful change. Our normal has changed, and we're finding new ways to connect and continue supporting one another. We started social distancing when we spend time with friends and explore local cuisine. And we're, what if you're just finding out about this now through me? Social distancing? Watch the news. And we're doing more to support and advocate for underrepresented communities. So what we need more than ever is an easy way to support each other from afar. The solution. PayPal. There you go. With the PayPal app, sending and receiving money is faster or easier. Who knew? It was PayPal all along. Stay connected with the people you love. Quickly and securely send money to friends and family just about anywhere in the world. Start a money pool to split the bill or go in on a gift or fundraise for a good cause. Support the places and causes you care about the most. Make touch-free QR code payments at your local restaurant or favorite farmer's market. Donate to a local nonprofit or support a cause from across the country. PayPal is making it easy to pay safely, quickly, and easily. Download the PayPal app today. Terms and conditions apply. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or have trouble sleeping at least once a week? You are not alone. Many of us do, including myself. E, all of the above. Anxiety, trouble sleeping... Those bothered me the most. I was searching for anything that would help. Then I discovered Feels. What is Feels? F-E-A-L-S, Feels. Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. Feels naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. Place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. Now, the product is called Feels, F-E-A-L-S. But feel the difference here is spelled traditionally F-E-E-L. So feels is the product. Feel is what you will do. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. So leave room to experiment over the course of a week or so. You may need to take more or less to get the effects you're after. New to CBD, Feels offers a free CBD hotline. 
to help guide your personal experience. Uh, breaker, breaker, uh, having trouble sleeping. That's a 10-4, good buddy. Feels works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high hangover or addiction. CBD uh, hotlines kind of sounds like CB radio. That's where I was going with there. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order, and you can pause or cancel anytime. By the way, I know we got some long-haul truckers who listen to the podcast. God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your service. Stay safe out there on the road. Feels has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash doughboys, and you get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash doughboys to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. We are here with Jamel Bowie. Reviewing this week's frozen food, Tina's Burritos, for Doughboy's Topical Freeze. Uh, Tina's Burritos was founded and is still based in Los Angeles. They make all their tortillas in-house. And so, uh, and it, you know, it's a place that's just kind of been local and continued and, and grown into a national brand over the over its decades of operation. Uh, Mitch, you had, you had something you wanted to, f- to finish up. Well, I was just saying that, like, to me, t- tacos are to Mexican food what spaghetti is to Italian food or something. You know what I mean? Like spaghetti and, sure. and red sauce. I just think that that is like kind of the basic thing. And, I, and as a kid, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't venture out too far and try different things at a Mexican restaurant at all. And I think it does come from – I mean, look, I'm being – Maybe too honest, but and I but I think other people can probably relate to that thing of Nick. You 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 had the benefit of growing up in Southern California, which I which is great, and you got to experience, I'm sure, a lot more different types of food. But right, but there there was definitely like you know in the 80s, oh, the sushi was like becoming a new thing. Like that wasn't yes. a thing that was it, it was like a uh, you know like a delicacy. It wasn't a, a thing that you'd have at Walgreens. So I remember the first time I encountered sushi, I was like, "This is weird." I had the same sort of reaction, 100%. and now I feel like someone growing up with it, it's just like, "Oh yeah, this is just a part of of uh, of the food that you have in America." Uh, but so that, that is that is crazy to me because I remember having sushi in our house for the first time and my mom and dad were having it and i felt like i was like 14 or something i felt like i was like much older yeah and it was a crazy and i was like raw fish like whoa like weird you know what i mean it was very strange to me at the time right and now i think it's like young kids it can be their favorite food which is great yeah i i um my parents were both in the military uh and so one consequence of that is that like they by virtue of and they were—I mean, they were in the military until I was until I went to college. They were in the military for like twenty-five years, um, but by the time I was like old enough to be sort of have an opinion about food, they mm. had already—they had like eaten stuff like Filipino food. They had eaten—they had eaten all this mm. sort of thing. So it was sort of part of our household uh, cooking because my dad did all the cooking, and so it's like he he liked that stuff. Um, but there were still things like like you, Mitch. I, I think the first time I had. Mexican food, quote unquote, was Taco Bell when I was like in elementary school. Like that's the first thing I can recall that mm-hmm. would qualify. And I, I think, and honestly, I think that I, I mean, like, look, I know we say that there's a lot of issues with all these fast food restaurants, and there is. But I think that a Taco Bell can be almost, and a Tina's Tina's burritos can be almost helpful in that way of like, oh, it's just that dip. It's you're dipping your foot in the pool of the idea of Mexican food. And I know that people right. don't think Taco Bell is Mexican food, but that kind of maybe sets you on a journey to try some different stuff, Nick, and get into it, you know? Oh, for sure. And, and I think a lot of people have kind of have followed that path. So the, the Tina's burritos we should talk about, uh, we should talk about one thing. We mentioned before the break that they are small, and they really are small. They are, these small. are dainty little things. At least the default, the default ones that are available. Uh, four ounces is the is the how big a serving is. Uh, yeah, they're they're like they're almost like taquitos. They're almost like fat taquitos. They're so they're so little. This a Tina's burrito is why I can say that I'm hung like a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hung like a burrito. Tina's burrito. I say it under my breath. <laughs> What did you What did you say quietly? Uh, nothing. Uh, oh, okay. Let's continue well, this date. <laughs> right, she's thinking he must be hung like a Chipotle burrito. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they are, they're they're tiny and they and they pack a caloric punch. 
Uh, I, you know, not much else for me for the rest of the day today because I, I had five of these things and I ate half of them except for the last one, which I ate a full one. And I'll tell you which one that was at the end. So about a thousand calories down for, for lunch on these burritos, which they do not seem like they, uh, like they are, are worth that many calories as you're taking them down. Yeah. I mean, if you're just trying to get full, because, uh, because you know, we, we you have different goals depending on uh, uh, like what you know, whatever you're depending on your socioeconomic situation. Like you, it's mm-hmm. just like you may not have enough. You may just be completely broken. It's just like this is the cheapest thing I can get, and I, and I if I eat two of these, I know I can get full for fifty cents. And I feel like that is the that is the advantage of these. But they're they're I mentioned how processed they are. They have so many ingredients. Like Natalie was reading the, the one of the labels, and it's just like literally like forty different ingredients on one of these things. Um, all the different the the different additives and preservatives that are packed in there. Um, in fact, a, a, a truly a rash has broken out on my arm. Uh, you can see it. I just I'm showing it to the camera right now. Mm-hmm. See, and I am wondering if if uh, a part of it is from. <laughs> So all the weird pre- preservatives in the food or something. I don't... It's hard to know. Will it be like the movie District 9? And just like tomorrow you'll wake up and you'll be a burrito? <laughs> That's a dream come true. Well, you, you'd be like a man versus food challenge burrito. <laughs> yes, I, I would assume a human-sized burrito would be a man versus food food size a man versus food challenge adam richman would tap out try to take you down yeah adam richman wouldn't even i don't even think he would dare try no is yeah that, is that guy still living he he's thin now he he lost some weight he had to quit the he had to quit the man versus food there's a new host i forget the name of the new host but the he had to quit because the all the spicy food he was eating for the challenges were burning a hole in his stomach lining Jesus and doctors Christ. were like you have to you have to stop <laughs> so they did man versus food nation for a time which was he would go there and then they he they draft a local person to take part in the challenge but then that gimmick didn't really work so then they just rebooted it with a new host I saw one of them recently. I watched one with a new host recently, um, and, and you know the guy's good. But the the actual like I was just like watching. I was just like, man, this is so. I just have a hard time watching this guy just like put himself in pain because <laughs> it was it was a fire and ice challenge where he had to eat um, like four pounds of spicy popcorn and then like ghost chili popcorn and then drink like a sixty four ounce milkshake. Mm. So it was just just what he was putting into his body. I was just like, God, this is so unpleasant to watch this person endure. That's that sounds like a fucking punishment. That not only does it sound like a punishment, that sounds like some caricature, like some Soviet propagandists would draw up about the United <laughs> States. <laughs> And then the editor of Pravda is like, uh, "This is too far. Let's. Uh, no one's going to buy this." <laughs> Do you know what I think would ha- would wouldn't help uh, Adam Richman in eating the the Mitch size burrito challenge? Is that the burrito would also be in my bed, which I feel like is kind of uh... <laughs> Nick. I think that they should replace it with like a with a fun, like a like a fun like a famous fun big guy. If, if, if for instance, if the Nutty Professor took over Man vs. Food. Oh, if you got a clump in there, boy, different, different story. Because the clump, a, a clump would be loving every minute of it. Of course, I can't even. I, th- you I, know what? That's the first that came to mind. I rewatched that. I I watched just the scene mm-hmm. of Dave Chappelle as the the comic roasting. Um, the, it's, uh, so me- uh, it's so mean. It's so mean. It's so me. I was like watching this. I remember laughing in the theater. Actually, I saw that on a date. I took a I took a, a girl to see this. Wow. And we, I remember both of us like like laughing so hard at that part that we like looked at each other like ha ha this is funny right and then I watched mm. it and I was just like I'm so, this I'm so, this is making me upset. It's supposed to make you feel ba- sad for for Sherman. Well, Ed, well, Eddie Murphy acts it really well, but it's but it's like it's but just like all these fat jokes. I remember like hearing the fat jokes and being like, oh, those are funny fat jokes. But watching it now, I'm just like, God, this this is just so cruel yeah. to this poor guy. But then. He comes back and he destroys Chappelle. I forgot that beat. He, he comes he back really? as he comes back as Buddy Love and he and he and he fucking rips into uh, Chappelle's character. He like roasts him. Oh, I didn't. I I don't remember this come up in scene at all. No. Oh, I'll have to rewatch this movie. Yeah, I, I was gonna say it's great, but it maybe possibly is problematic. So I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, the the ones I got, here are the varietals of Tina's burritos that I was able to obtain. I got the bean and cheese, and I should mention that there's a different wrapper color for each flavor, which is a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the bean and cheese, the beef and bean, the beef and bean slash green chili, the red hot beef, and the beef and bean chimichanga. So those are kind of the baseline burritos. And then I got a couple. I got one Tina's Cantina, uh, which is like their fancier label. Uh, I got a Tina's Cantina breakfast burrito, which had eggs, bacon, and cheddar. And then I got a Tina's Chimmy. As distinct from the beef and bean chimichanga, this is a more substantial, thicker uh, chimichanga. And this was steak and cheddar cheese. Uh, that's the one I had today with lunch. The rest of them I had yesterday uh, in, in kind of a gauntlet. Uh, Jamel, what, what were you able to track down Tina's burrito wise? Here in Virginia, we just had the we had bean, bean and cheese, and hot beef. And so that is what I got. Uh, ate them, uh, ate, ate, ate some of them. Um, well, I mean, tried all of them uh, today, uh, shortly before this record. How did you prep them? Did you microwave or oven them? I microwave them. I thought I was going to oven them, but then I thought to myself, I want to do this authentically. Like if I were, if I were actually going to, if I were eating microwavable burritos on the regular, I would just pop them in the microwave. I wouldn't go through the trouble of putting them in the oven. Yeah, I think that's the more authentic experience. I will say I wanted to try. I've had a lot of these in my life, and I, I'd never put them in the oven. So I tried. Uh, I did a baking sheet uh, with a batch of them in the oven, and then I microwaved uh, the the Tina's Chimmy Steak and Cheddar Cheese one separately. Um, and uh, I don't think there was – I mean, honestly, probably – there. I think it's better in the microwave because yeah. the issue with the oven is that it crisps up the tortilla, and then it stops having the texture of the burrito. It's just like a – it's just like a crunchy filled, like almost pastry. Uh, Mitch, what, what did you track down? Uh, well, I guess I got another cat here now, if you haven't noticed. Oh, uh, look, uh, on your, uh, that's of course your adorable cat, Wally again. <laughs> oh, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you, know it's, you know it's not Wally. It's I know that's Irma. I know. She, was, uh, she likes plastic, Dada. so I brought out all these. Uh, ooh. Dada. Aww. Did Irma just say Dada? <laughs> she, she did. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Irma, what good time? baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, she likes plastic, so she came up when uh, I had all these burrito wrappers out. I got oh, that's adorable. Um, I got the brown bag, which is beef and bean. The green yes. bag, beef and bean slash green chili. The red bag, red hot beef. The blue bag, beef and, chin, beef and bean chimichanga. And then the black bag, beef and bean sriracha. Um, as, a, as a kid, when I was, when I was younger, this, the beef and bean brown bag, this, this was the big one. And then I feel like this was the one I had the most. And then the beef and, green, and, beef and bean and green chili, the green bag, and then the, the, the red hot beef. I'm not sure... Yes. I think maybe the the red hot beef came out maybe at the same time as the beef and, and bean, but maybe the green one was a little later. But all three of those I remember having as a kid. And also I remember the black bag, but I don't think it was beef and bean and sriracha. I think it was a different style. Maybe it's changed over the years, or maybe I'm just wrong. I suspect sriracha is a recent introduction with the whole yeah. sriracha trend and, and you know, the, the these – Fast food and frozen foods are always really late to the party with these uh, with these trends, but they eventually jump on. Red hot beef is the one I remember. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was maybe it was beef and bean and cheese or uh, or something. I don't know. Someone someone will know this online and yell at us. I I would always get the bean and cheese and the red hot beef. Those are the ones that that stick out. I will say, tasting the bean and cheese again, I was like, man, this really doesn't have much cheese in it. Yeah, it's like a bean burrito. No, that, that, that's that's. I was sort of surprised by that. I was expecting it to be sort of like way cheesier, but it's just sort of like a, I don't know, like a hint of cheese, or maybe the the type of cheese and the way it's mixed in. I don't know, but it was, it was much more, um, yeah, just kind of beads with a, a tiny bit of cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and not much as a result. There's just not a lot of flavor in that one. It's it's very just. You know, you're just getting bites of hot starch. Um, the, the, the ones where, you know, having beef in it, I think helped it a lot. I think the, I, I prefer the beef and bean and the beef and bean green chili over the bean and cheese. The bean and cheese is probably my least favorite. And the red hot beef, I think is like, it has a decent kick to it. Uh, you know, I am something of a heat seeker and, and like having that, having like a little bit of, of heat to it that I didn't have to add a hot sauce to, um, 
it's not super spicy, but it's got just enough where it actually tastes like something. That was probably one of my favorites uh, from the batch. As as a kid, I loved the brown bag, the beef and bean burrito. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite. Um, the red, the red hot beef one, I always thought just had a different taste to it. And also, I don't think I, I, there might be beans in it. Like now I can't even remember if there was beans in it or not in the red hot beef one. But it just has a slightly different taste to it, and I and I don't like it as much. I think I would go green, the the green chili bag, the green chili burrito, before I would do the the red hot beef one. It's a little milder, and it's a little bit less. It's a little, you know, that it's got a chili flavor. It's not just generically hot, which the red hot beef is kind of just generically spicy. Yeah, almost like they just loaded it up <laughs> with with the chili powder or something. Bye bye. <laughs> Or hi. I don't know if you said hi or bye. Yeah, you see you saying bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. That is precious. He thinks our show is bad. He was done with it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the green, the green, and the green bag and brown bag. I'll refer to them. Those were my. I think those were my two favorites growing up. But I still, and I still. I think those are. I still think it's the same. I'll, I'll give. A, I'll probably give a, a ranking towards the end here. But uh, there's a couple things that I remember that still are still are the case with with these guys. One is that you're supposed to put a paper towel around them when you microwave. It says to microwave for a minute and ten seconds. You need to go way longer. At least I did. And I when I when I was younger, I did a minute on one side in a paper towel, and then a minute on the other side in a paper towel. Here at my house, I did a minute ten seconds, and then a minute ten seconds. Uh, the paper towel will get stuck to the burrito, and it will kind of partially open up. Yeah, it will splatter issue. when you're cutting it. And then another issue is is that if you cook it just a little too long, the ends can really get hard. Uh, you'll, you'll get some hardened ends there, or the beef will spill out of the burrito and really just burn to the plate. Uh, that's another issue. Um, but I gotta say, Nick, I've had a lot. Of, I've had a lot of frozen burritos over the years, and I think. For the price that these things are, I think that the taste of them is still good. I, I know that I know that they're not high quality, but just like the beefy and, and beany taste of them is still better than a lot of other big frozen burritos. Maybe because they're so compact. I'd agree with that. The, the, of the of the ones I had, the red hot beef I thought was the best tasting one, and it really didn't taste that meaningfully different from what I remember. Sort of like you know a three dollar organic frozen burrito taste um mm. uh i mean it wasn't the same but it was like close enough that if i were if i were buying frozen burritos i would just go for the cheaper one yeah yeah definitely and and i think that's the, the main asset here is just how cheap they are and and i i you know uh, so so the, the chimichanga the beef and bean chimichanga which is a comes in a blue wrapper I didn't even realize it was a chimichanga when I was buying it because it just looked like all the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, but so, but as far as I can tell, and I, 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 this was one of the ones I wanted to put in the oven to see if if the if it altered the texture at all. But as far as I can tell, it's it's uh, as as opposed to having any sort of deep fried feeling to it. This is just it just is like a thicker tortilla. It's just a little bit more hot pockety. I didn't find it unpleasant. But it wasn't it wasn't really like the crispiness that I expect to get from a chimichanga if I get it from a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this one was okay. I I didn't think it was it was appreciably better or worse than the beef and bean regular burrito. It just had a little bit more tortilla to it. It just had like a slight taste of that chimichanga coating. Like you could just could taste it like just a little bit, just a little bit of like oil that you mm -hmm. that you were. Yeah, that, that, that you were absorbing, and the, and the, or that the tortilla had absorbed, and then the 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 eggs, bacon, and cheese uh, cantina burrito. I just this was one of my least favorites, and I think the issue was the eggs reminded me of like I remember when I used to be in Boy Scouts, and there'd be for whatever reason on some campouts that we wouldn't have actual eggs. There'd be like a rehydrated egg that you'd like add boiling water to and whip it mm. up. And I just remember those tasting like so like egg adjacent, but not really like eggs. And this is what that tastes. I mean, it may have been that same kind of product within these, uh, but the, the eggs just tasted so gross. Even though it, this had a, a decent amount of cheese and you could taste the, the, the hints of bacon. This one, I just was like, I found this to be the least pleasant one to eat. However, the chimmy steak and cheddar cheese, 
which I had today along with my uh, with my knockoff Waldorf salad, I thought was actually pretty good. That was the the, the one of these where I was like, I kind of like this. Uh, the steak chunks within it had had a nice texture to them. Um, Nick, which 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 one was this? This is the chimmy. So I think this is again okay. one of their labels that's a little bit more as opposed to the chimichanga. This one was a little bigger. It was like it was more of like a like an eight to ten ounce as opposed to the four ounce, and it just mm. had a little bit of a higher uh, grade of product inside of the tortilla. It felt like I thought this one was pretty good, and also microwaving it versus putting it in the oven. I actually think even though it was a chimichanga, I actually think it worked better in the microwave versus the chimichanga that I did up on the on a baking sheet. Wow. Nick, I, I I never not only have I never got the kind of higher higher class version ones, the ones the ones you got. No surprise, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Call me a one percenter because of my Tim. What are the frozen burritos I bought? Snooty Wags gets the you got you got Tina's burritos. I've truly never even seen. I've never seen these nicer versions, the breakfast burrito ones, and the you show me the packaging. I've never even seen them before. Maybe because they do look so different that I've never noticed them. But I I really searched yesterday when I was at the the supermarket and i did not see the kind of the 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 higher status uh tina's burritos anywhere uh, the so the ralph's i went to a ralph's which is a, a kroger in much of the country it's mm. and um and the yeah i i had never seen those either i think they might be newer uh varietals i think they might have been like oh we have all our default ones let's make some bigger you know a, a higher price point ones uh, Jabel, did, were, were there any other uh, any other burrito thoughts you had on your end? The ones you sampled? Uh, no other no other burrito thoughts. I I thought the tor- the tortilla is not great, but it wasn't like I mean I, I think my my sort of main thought is none of this was as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I, you're I referring know. to guesting on Doughboys. <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> um, I, I, which is something I actually take kind of seriously. Like I was really appar- I was like actually kind of apprehensive, sort of like, okay, I got these frozen burritos. How are they going to taste? And like I had, I tried all of them, and I was like, you know, I, I wouldn't eat these normally, but they're not, they're not terrible. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not like. Uh, if I ate one or ate two, I don't think I'd like feel like shit afterwards. Yeah, some rumblies. I will say that that was the <laughs> so I had like a batch of six burritos, portions of six burritos in one go yesterday, and that was the worst I felt physically this calendar year. It, wow. it really, and and I think it was just the quantity of. Yeah, uh, I mean, you of, had six burritos. It was too much. It was excessive. I think you know what I'll say that the it was quantity as opposed to. Uh, the quality of the food, but I did I'd you eat all of be them? Be careful about putting down too many of these. I did eat all of them. I, I had like a nub of the. I had some nubs left. I had some some like just ends, but I, I had most of the most of these. They're small. Mm-hmm. It's not crazy to eat. I mean, it is. It's bad to eat six of these, but it's not crazy <laughs> to eat six of no, these. No, I, I, given, given how small they are, I'd say like I did a reasonable serving is like two or three. I mean, six is excessive, yeah. but yeah. When I, when I when I would come in after having some drinks, I would usually two would, was usually around where I would stop off. But this is a, a late night thing, but right, yeah. No, I was having them at eleven a.m. on a weekday. Um, all right, Jesus. let's uh, let's get to our final thoughts on Tina's burritos. So, Jamel, you've done the show before, but just a refresher: we will each go around, give a closing argument, if you will, uh, referring to this this uh, particular product, and then give it a rating from zero to five forks. You are our guest. We will begin with you. All right. So, I have three of these burritos. Um, they are all kind of similar-ish flavors. <laughs> Uh, the hot, the red hot beef, I thought was the best of them. Um, like I said, these aren't, these aren't terrible. These aren't like inedible. These aren't sort of, these aren't, they aren't gross. They're just sort of like cheap, uh, uh, tasty enough burritos. Like, um, if you need to consume a bunch of calories quickly, this is what they're there for. Um, and so with that in mind, I, 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 I'd say three forks sounds about three right. Three forks. Wow. Um, wow. Because, like, I mean, here's my reasoning. Anything above three seems like, oh, these are really good and I would recommend them. Anything below three is like, I uh, I dislike this. This caused me, you know, discomfort or displeasure right. in some way. But, like, neither of those things are true. So it's sort of like three is, like, by default, maybe two and a half forks. Two and a half forks sounds a little more reasonable. Two and a half forks. Wow. Two and a half right. forks oh, damn. from right. Jamel. 
Go ahead, Spoon Man. So the green package, which is the beef and green chili, the brown package, which is beef and bean, and the and the red package is red hot beef. Those are the old standbys. And I think that those are are, are all good. I, I, I even even the red hot beef, which I always said would taste it a little bit different, I still enjoy. Um the black package, the sriracha one is is there's not enough of a sriracha taste, but it's still not bad. And uh, the the chimichanga one is it's fine. It just it slightly tastes like a chimichanga. Uh, the bite of the night for me, Nick Spoonman's bite of the night, uh, beef and bean, the classic brown bag, old standby. Uh, that's my favorite one. And after that, I'd probably go green chili, and then you know. It doesn't really matter, but as an old standby, maybe red hot beef would be third, and then the other ones, whatever. Um, the tortillas are a little bit gummy. I we we I know that that's a thing with you, Nick. It's a the, yes. the gumminess of a tortilla. Like I said, there's those other issues with the paper towel getting stuck to it. It can sp- kind of spread out everywhere. But these have a place in my heart. I used to eat them when I was in high school, and I've had a couple drinks. Me and Chankton would cook them up. My dad put them in the in the in the freezer in the in the basement, and we cook them up, and we'd watch some undressed on MTV, and we'd eat some burritos together. Very after, horny show after after being out. Uh, yeah, me and Jackson would watch that while eating burritos, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and underage drinking, which I don't condone. But uh, I also want to give a award to these things, though. I'm going to give it a late night bite award because I think that the. I th- I feel like the, the these are the perfect kind of like drunk. I'm gonna cook one of these and put some hot sauce on them. For me, when I first had these, it was Tabasco. I was a big Tabasco mm-hmm. guy, and then over the course of like like from when I was like 14, 15, 16, Frank's Red Hot sauce came into my life, and I switched over to Frank's. But I originally started with Tabasco on these guys, and they were just the perfect like snack, late night food. And Nick, I kind of love them. I'm giving four forks to him. Four forks. That's right. Wow. I love wow. them. And you know what? Find me a frozen burrito that's better than it. I don't know. I can't. None of like the the these Monterey. They're not. They're they're not that good. For for what? How much they cost? Price point? What they're trying to do? Think about what they're trying to do. That, that's a really good point. Like if you know, compared to a three dollar, four dollar frozen burrito. Um, What's the, what's really the quality difference there? It's not that great. Not much, not much at all. Yeah, these these are definitely cheap as shit. And I think the you know uh, uh, you guys touched on this, but thinking of this in terms of the way we evaluate things on this podcast, like how does it achieve what it is trying to achieve? How would it succeed at that? I think it overall does. It is very. It, it's targeted at being a budget frozen burrito and it will fill you up and some of them taste decent like they approximate a a good burrito so mm. i will say you know i got a big case of the rumblies from these um i i think be gen- be think about your intestinal tract in terms of what you're going to put in your body before you have too many Don't of eat these six of them <laughs> don't eat six of them. That is that is excessive. Also, don't put them in the oven. Microwave these guys. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. do not microwave put them in the them. oven. You're absolutely right. Uh, yes, one hundred percent. That is my lesson from this. Putting these on a baking sheet in in the oven for thirty minutes and three hundred fifty at three hundred fifty degrees was not worth the trouble. And they actually came out worse than they would have if I just microwaved them. They came out too crunchy. So I am going to say, you you know. I, the big thing is that that about half of these I didn't really love. About half of these I was like, mm. this is just sustenance. I don't think this has much to it. I don't think this is there's there's a flavor here that I enjoy. The other ones I I I either was okay with or liked. So I think I can't quite give it three forks, but I think I can go right below it and say two forks, three times, two and three quarter forks for Tina's burritos. Wow. Um, that was our review of Tina's Burritos. It's time for a segment from Doughboys Media Studios in Los Angeles. This is Serial, a segment told one bowl at a time. This is a collect call from Toucan Sam. And I see the chick's rabbit. He's in a bathtub. It's just, oh God, it's full of blood. They were trying to get me lucky charms. 
Okay, so we wanted to try and do a cereal. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What was before the Lucky Charms thing? What happened? Uh, the Trix Rabbit was in a bathtub full of blood. Oh my so god! So we wanted to try and get do a cereal, do some sort of breakfast cereal. But Jamel, you were at the the market and you texted me. You stumbled upon these Pop Tarts pretzel, and it's yes. this is such a. I, I mean, we did a Pop-Tarts double, Mitch. We, mm -hmm. we went through and tasted a bunch of these because they have some crazy, like, a creamsicle uh, Pop-Tart, yeah. a, a hot fudge sundae Pop-Tart, a root beer Pop-Tart. They've just gone full, like, disgusting Franken-food dessert uh, with, their, with their lineup. But the pretzel ones, I was still shocked by. You, we were, so we were going to do a cereal segment, so you just did cereal still no matter what? Yeah, I wanted to still do the cereal intro. I feel like this still kind of counts. It's I mean, when I was when I was in elementary school, for whatever insane reason, my parents let me have pop tarts and YooHoo for breakfast every day. <laughs> so it kind of counts. I I had a similar upbringing where my you know because I talked about all the, the the sugary cereals that I had, and yeah, my parents just like for whatever reason breakfast they were just like you know what whatever you eat is fine. We just want to we just need you to get food in your body before you go to school. If you want to have fucking cocoa puffs, we'll, we'll have you'll have cocoa puffs. It's fine. Now, Nick, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. find the. I I couldn't find this the the pretzel pop tarts. You weren't able to track it down. Uh, so I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a uh, a Snickers, a Spoonman snacker whack with the Snickers salty and sweet. Wow. Okay. So I've got a couple of. Hey, this is also that works out perfectly, Mitch, because these are salty and sweet. Wow. How about that? Very savvy of you. So I've got two varietals here. I've got the, the cinnamon sugar one and also the pretzel chocolate. Pretzel cinnamon sugar pretzel chocolate. Wow. It's like a, a pretzel -y crust with salt on it and then a, a, some sort of sweet, um, sweet filling uh, plus a little a sweet drizzle on top. The chocolate one has a, has a chocolate drizzle. Uh, the cinnamon one has just sort of a gen generic icing. Are you eating these heated up, by the way, just out of curiosity? Yes, I put these in. I followed the instructions, which were to put it at the, in the toaster at the lowest setting, and that's what I did. So these are a little bit warmed. Uh, Jamal, which ones do you have? I have, uh, I have just the cinnamon ones. I have one that I toasted and one that I didn't because I always am curious to see what the difference is. I used to only, I just took a bite of the chocolate one. I used to only have them untoasted. It was actually later in life when I decided to like actually follow the instructions, but I was just, I think I was just so impatient that I would just want to take them out of the wrapper and eat them immediately. I think that this could be a step up for them. I'm going to have to try these too at some point, but uh, Albertsons did not have them the other day. Um, I never, the pop, the, the tart, the like kind of the dry cardboardy uh, part of the pop tart, I never loved. So, this has the potential to, if you replace that with pretzel, maybe it's a little bit better. I don't know. Or you're about to tell me. I don't know what I'm, I feel like I don't know what I'm eating. <laughs> this is such a weird taste. It's just so strange. It's not quite like the, like you have like a peanut butter pret, like, or you have like a, a, a pretzel M&M. That's what I was thinking. If you have like a pretzel M&M and you get like that salty and sweet, I feel like that works like really well. And I, like, I get what you're going for. This is almost, I've, I've just had the chocolate one, which is not particularly chocolatey, uh, and I'm going to have the cinnamon sugar one. I feel like it doesn't have enough salt. I feel like it's just, I, to me, it's just kind of like a thicker, a thicker pastry. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's really, there's not enough salt. It's really, it, these things are always dry, but this is like especially dry. Super dry. Yo, I've already drank uh, my entire glass of water, and I've had, like, two bites. Oh, dear God. Boy, yeah, I find the chocolate one, which I had first, is the better of these. The cinnamon sugar is just kind of all over the map. I, I don't really—I I, I just—I I feel like the thing is here, it, it's not achieving the promise of the packaging, which is the, the pretzel, which is the salty and the sweet, which is the pretzel— and the uh, and the sugar and the chocolate and the cinnamon sugar and I'm just not getting it. I I don't know. I mean, I, th this is this is pretty this is pretty bad. This is uh, this is not. So Mitch, I don't think you need to try this. No, and I, I'm sort of. It doesn't even really taste much like a pretzel. Right. It just sort of oh, just, it, it just tastes like a. That's all. That's whack. Yeah. That's what you want. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah, abs this one does. Yeah, I was, I was in, in my head, in my imagination, I thought these would be like at least very pretzely. Um, but not even no. that. Pretty, pretty disappointing. All right, Mitch, you, you have a Snickers. It seems like you got the, uh, uh, you came out on top here, I'm guessing. 
the salt and it's a salt and uh, salty and sweet Snickers. I'm gonna take a bite right now. Mitch, do you ever do your burrito uh, hung like a burrito trick? But you could do that with like a Snickers, like hung like a Snickers, a fun size Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> It's also funny that I'd be bragging about a regular size Snickers. <laughs> That's you know okay, I guess. <laughs> That's probably what I'd have to brag about. Um, <laughs> okay, this is very interesting to me. You can kind of taste that it's a little bit salty and a little bit sweet, but Nick. Yes. Maybe similar issues here in that maybe this isn't salty enough. Maybe I want some more salt out of the salty wow. and sweet Snickers. Boy. I mean, this is not bad because it's a Snickers. It's still good. Is it? Is it salty? Because I feel like Snickers as is are kind yeah. of salty. Like that's good sort of point. the appeal of them. So is it, is it saltier than a regular Snickers? It is. It is. Uh, it's that tricky thing because the sweet. Hmm. This one blows my mind. This is this is kind of crazy because it. The sweetness, the kind of the int- when it intensifies the sweetness. It's maybe kind of that fake sugary sweetness, you know what I mean? Like, uh, right, which maybe shouldn't be dialed up as much, and it maybe overshadows some of that saltiness. But when you are done, like as I finish my second bite of it, I'm like, oh yeah, it is saltier. I can taste salt in my mouth more so. But the initial bite into it, I'm like, oh, like it, like a uh, like you want almost like salt sprinkled on top of it or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. What's your verdict? Where do you where, where do you land here? I mean, it's a snack for sure. Mm-hmm. But is this better? You know what I mean? Like, it's not better than a regular Snickers. Yeah, and that's it, always the standard. Yeah, and I, honestly, I, I I would love for you guys to try this because I don't. It's really odd. Like, uh, like if I got this by itself, would I just think it was a? Would I think it's a regular Snickers? I, I don't. I maybe. I don't know. It's weird. It's it's it doesn't really. I feel like it doesn't really deliver on what it's supposed to be, but you can tell, like, because I'm thinking about it, yeah. I know that it is saltier and sweeter. But I don't know. Sometimes these brands are a little too conservative with these things when really they should be taking a big swing. You you, you find that a lot with like a spicy snack that is just like it doesn't have any heat to yeah. it at all because they're just so worried about someone being you know upset over it. Uh, but yeah, if they, if they really went hard on the salty there, and and if they they really went, you know, they really went for it, that that one could work out. Yeah, I mean, Jamal, what you're talking about, I, I've I feel like I've eaten a, a sack of cornstarch. Like my mouth is so dry, I'm about to finish my pint glass full of water that I poured just for this segment. It is this is this is yeah, this is a pretty unpleasant thing to eat. Well, hey, that was cereal uh, slash uh, Spoon Man's treat or skeet. Uh, just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open. Well, you know, hold on a second. I'm just gonna say that is yes. that is that's a treat. It's not a skeet. That's a treat. It's a treat. Um, that's a treat. If you're if you're updating the Doughboys wiki, it is still good. It's still. I mean, it's a Snickers bar basically. So how can it be bad? But still, I'd say the the best the best for for my money the best uh, sort of salty sweet candy you can get at a store. Is a payday. Oh, I love a payday. The peanuts and the caramel. Wow. Do you like just the, the just the regular payday, not the chocolate covered? Just the regular payday. Man, I'm with you. That is a, that was a go to for me for a while, and I thought I was like, I, I feel like that was a candy that was derided a little bit. Like it was like because it's like a weird candy because it just looks like a, a log of nuts. Right. I mean, it's like an old man candy. I mean, it, li- yeah. it literally, it literally is uh was created during the great depression wow so it's <laughs> it, like it actually is like just an old man candy but it's very good yeah and it has like the right balance of sweetness and saltiness you feel like when you get you're getting a payday it feels like you're getting like the bit of honey or whatever right or like an abba zabba it's just like a like from another time but it is it is really good it's very satisfying in the same way that a snickers my is. dad my dad my dad who was technically born in the silent the silent generation i guess mm-hmm. uh he was born in 42 which puts him in that in that uh in in that generation but he would he 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 loved like black licorice and mm. like uh black jelly bean like he like he liked kind of the, the he loved those old school snacks that i think taste like shit <laughs> like uh yeah they're so harsh for me <laughs> and paydays paydays don't fall under that category but you are right that, that that is that is such an old school snack but he he was he was one step above where he loved that 
like a like he would like I'm sure he would chew on like a piece of like on a piece of what 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 do you, what do you chew on like a like a uh, what is a piece of wood oh, that I you know chew what on? you're talking about I don't yes know. I know what you're like sugar cane oh sugar cane yes thank you yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah I I think I think I think he was like such an old school candy guy but his but his favorite candy was Snickers. I think Snickers wow. has Snickers has that old school quality to it too that that Payday does even though it's a newer compared to Payday it's a newer. It's just a crowd pleaser and with good reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, just like a restaurant via your feedback, let's open up the feedback. Today we have an email from Shannon. Shannon writes, "Is it weird that my 33-year-old boyfriend did not know that a sweet potato was a real plant until today?" I asked him what he thought they made sweet potato fries out of and he said he thought it was just a recipe. Last year, he also learned how to eat a jelly bean for the first time. He thought you just sucked on it and thought it was weird they didn't have a flavor. I am concerned about other things he doesn't know. What can I help? What can I do to help him learn very basic food facts? Uh, Thanks for the email, Shannon. Uh, Any advice for someone who's dating a complete food noob? (laughs) That that sweet potato thing uh, uh, blows my mind. (laughs) <laughs> with that, that, with that, that piece of information alone, I know that Shannon is is dating a white person. <laughs> <laughs> I got some advice. Go ahead. Dump the goon. Get with the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it sounds like you know he's uh, you, you just got kind of a. a I don't know. Like maybe you're, you're dating a classic dumb guy, and that's okay. It's okay to be a dumb guy. I mean, it, it's. I would just say, in terms of of helping him learn basic things, I don't even know where to begin here. Maybe try cooking. Have you tried cooking a recipe together? Maybe that would help. Maybe you you know you get you get together with this guy, and you're like, hey, let's let's make some let's make some cookies, or you know what, let's make something. Let's make a grilled cheese sandwich. Let's make something very basic. Let's make some scrambled eggs. Let's just let's just let's cook together, and maybe that could be a way you could uh, you could talk about food, and maybe that could be a way you could introduce eventually some new ingredients into the relationship. This this is like uh, what um, meal kits are sort of like made for, right? Like if you if you don't oh good point if you're not if you're not familiar with things or you don't know something, then like you cook one a blue apron together, and it can uh, help you get there. What did he What did he think sweet potatoes came from? I th- I believe he thought they were potatoes, regular potatoes with some sort of sweet element. I assume just maybe just sugar. Okay, this guy's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that does, because it doesn't explain the orange part. Like they're orange. Yes. That's insane. Shannon, I'm not going to tell you to dissolve this relationship over this. I, I I think that I think that yes I think cooking together I think the I think the idea of using a meal kit could definitely help because that's that spells everything out for him, um, you know again you 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 have it sounds like a dopey boyfriend so maybe while you're cooking he gets his hand stuck in a pickle jar or something that's okay <laughs> you guys can work through that Nick I got uh, advice I do I do have I have advice I have advice mm-hmm. take him to a farm take him to a farm and then take him behind the farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering where that was gonna go. I was, gonna, I mean, cause if, you're, if you're gonna leave it at a farm, it's like, yeah, then you know, go have them kill a chicken or something, <laughs> <laughs> or just even look at look at the different things grown on a farm. Or I, it seems like this guy doesn't know basic, but also he couldn't, he didn't know how to chew jelly bean. He didn't, he, he sucked on jelly beans. You might have to take a step back, Shannon, because I'm wondering, like, does this man have object permanence? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what, is his, what is going on with him exactly? Maybe he's an alien from another planet. You know what? That's that a possibility as well. And, and in that case, I would just, I would be suspicious. Is he, is he like Vincent D'Onofrio in Men in Black, Wags? Is he always asking for sugar and water? I think this is a solvable problem, Shannon. I think I think you guys could just uh, come up with an activity to do together, and then have a have, try some di- try some different restaurants, try some food that maybe you you haven't even tried, and 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 uh, and 
and uh, it, it expose yourself, expose him to some different cuisines. If you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GO-DOUGH. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. Nick. Doughboys Topical Freeze continues all month long. Go ahead, Mitch. Shannon just reminds me of uh, Shannon Doherty. I watched uh, Heathers last night. It was great. I'd never seen Heathers before. Holds up. Great movie. I loved it. It was great. Wow. Check it out if you've never seen it. Yeah, that, that's Mitch's plug for this week. Check out Heathers. And, uh, <laughs> you, were, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were talking about topical stuff, so I thought I'd bring up Heathers. <laughs> What's more? <laughs> Joel Bowie, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for returning to the show. Do you have anything you'd like to plug at this time? Uh, sure. Uh, my column uh, usually shows up on Tuesdays and Fridays at the New York Times. Um, my Twitter is at Jay Bowie. Um, it's, you know, I tweet about politics shit and movies. And people like to yell at me on Twitter, and that's always fun. So you can join in on that if that's your speed. Um, yeah, Mitch, and, you should stop doing that. <laughs> He's our friend. <laughs> and if you want to, I'm I'm really active on Instagram. Um, uh, so my Instagram's uh, at jbui as well. Awesome. And your serious eats uh, cereal column that that's monthly. Yeah, it's monthly. Yeah, that shows up whenever I uh, I'm I'm not too depressed to actually do it. So um, <laughs> uh, that the latest one should be up pretty soon, I think. Awesome. Check all that out. And hey, that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. On the next Doughboys Double, the most momentous event in paywalled podcasting history. The scale. What is the scale? Find out at patreon.com slash doughboys. Sources for this week's intro are available in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.